What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at the brand new update to Twin Motion. It's 2020.2. There's lots of new things we're gonna look at. I'm really excited here. We're, we're on the website. We're gonna run over all the new features that we have within this update. I'm also gonna jump into Twin Motion and just real quickly give you a rundown of what these look like in the program itself. Before we get into it, if you're new here, Consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That helps me out so much. And if you happen to learn something, maybe consider demolishing that like button. That also helps me out so much. So here we are on Twin Motion's website within Unreal Engine, and we have the update 2020.2, and there's lots of new things to look at. And we're just going to start going down the list, and I'm going to jump over to Twin Motion periodically and show you some of these real quickly, and we can start to get an idea of what these new features are and the impact they might have on our workflows. So the very first thing, animation and phasing tools, interactive parametric doors. I, you know, this, you could see this coming in the roadmap, but I did not expect it to show up within this update or even this year, honestly. But the fact that we have new and animated doors is, is awesome. So <laughs> it, it's great. We have new looking doors. So let's jump over to twin motion and we can start to see what this looks like. I'm just in a basic scene and I've got a little platform set up and we, let's start exploring some of these doors. So here we are and let's go to objects and immediately here at the bottom we see doors. And within this section we have rotating doors and sliding doors. Like this is like literally out of the box. I don't have to do anything. And so a lot of times you're gonna use this single or double rotating just as a, a default, but let's look what this looks like. So, okay. It's a door. I'm gonna go ahead and put a double in here. And the nice thing is, as soon as I get close to this, the door opens. <laughs> the animation works. And as I back away, it, it works the same. It closes. This is absolutely fantastic for creating animations. This can even work with custom paths. If you have a path set up where you have pedestrians walking in, this is gonna work all the same. Now, I'm not gonna go into great detail when it comes to all the new features with the doors because I'm going to make a specific video on the new doors within Twin Motion. There's all of these different doors. It, there's so many settings that we can start to look at with these doors. And this is just rotating doors. We can now go to sliding doors and we have basically all the same, but just a bunch of different kind of doors. You know, maybe you want to use this door there. And again, as I get closer within this, this blue area, the door will slide open. Like this is, it's, this is fantastic stuff. And honestly, I, this is beginning to out, outdo Enscape. Like I, for the ease Enscape is and the fact that you could walk through doors on Enscape, this is like 10 steps beyond Enscape because while you can walk through the doors, there's no animation of doors within Enscape. And the fact that not only is the door animated, but uh, now we can walk through the doors and twin motion. I'm really excited about that. Absolutely excited about doors. Like you can see all the different settings that we have to work with, with all these types of doors. And frankly, these doors will be really important in creating awesome animations and creating your scenes and helping them to seem more lifelike. But I'm going to save that for a completely separate video going through all these different options and settings. Definitely be on the lookout for that. So we looked at all the animated doors within Twin Motion, but now not only that, but we have animator objects. And you might wonder what the difference is, but not only is it animating doors, but windows, elevators, and a bunch of different things. Basically, it's kind of like custom animations. And they've included some presets, which include a roundabout, a lifting barrier, and industrial gate and retractable bollage. So we're gonna look at those now and see what they are, what they do, and how we can start to implement our own animations in Twin Motion. You can find all of those if you actually go to tools. And then now we have this new section called animators. And so we again, just like before with the, the rotating and sliding doors, we've got rotators and then translators, which is kind of another way of sliding. So under my rotators, I've got this rotating door, which we, we've actually seen before. We've got this children's roundabout and you can see it's animated. It is rotating. It is doing what a children's roundabout does. And the lifting barrier, this is gonna be great if you do parking garages. It's fantastic because it's gonna act just like the doors and where once you set up a point where you get close enough, it, it's going to open up and it's going to allow cars on a custom path, cars going into a parking garage, not only to be animated, but to enter a garage correctly. You have a lifting arm that's now going to do this. 
Now, there's not really you can more we can do about this as far as change the materials or the look or anything right now. I hope in the future that we can, but there is nothing like that currently. Let's get rid of these and we'll go back and look at the translators. Again, tools, animators, translators. We've got this industrial gate, which is really cool. It's pretty slow, but it is kind of like a gate opening for a car. And then a retractable bollard, pretty good. You know, a tra retractable bollard, it's gonna do just like that. Look at that, it looks pretty good. So you might be wondering what these translators and this rotator is, and that's gonna be a part of the custom side of this animation. So if I put in a rotator, and as soon as I click that, really nothing's gonna happen, but let's actually click this, and now we've got all kinds of things that we can do. We've, we can start to deal with the settings of when it's going, and the angle, and the type of animation, the speed at which it is, and what's going to actually trigger this animation. Then up here, we can link an object to this rotation. We can also unlink an object, but we can choose where we're going to pivot. And again, just like I had a separate, I'll make a separate video for the doors and all the settings for those doors. I'm going to make a separate video looking extensively at different types of rotating and translating animations. So just like we have here, the rotators, we've got the same thing with the translator. And if I place that down there, it's just a straight line. And there's a, of course, you've got all the distance variables and everything you could put in here. You might want to send a flag up a pole, you, all kinds of things you can do. You, of course, you can rotate this and do this like anything else. It's got all the same gizmo operations. But just like before with the rotator and translator, I'm going to make a separate video on custom animations in twin motion. And again, I'm going to comment on this now, but another something else that we do not see in Inkscape, I'm constantly comparing twin motion and Inkscape and the fact that we see one up from Inkscape and then one up from twin motion from one update to the next is perfect. It's it's the perfect competitive environment, but you know, I am all for twin motion and the fact that we see these custom animations able to be within our projects immediately and the fact that we could bring our own objects in you know let's say i'm i work in revit and so i can bring in revit objects and if i can tie those objects to these translators i can start making some beautiful looking scenes that work great with videos and animations so that's cool i'm going to delete these and we're going to go back to our website animated objects really cool really cool really looking forward to making more videos on that Faster, easier phasing. Now, I have not even made a video on phasing yet, but it is pretty exciting what you can do with phasing in twin motion. And I'll quickly show you what we had before was just a simple timeline on all the different phases. And it was kind of all bulked into one. Whereas now if I come to my media and phasing, I'm going to create phasing. And now I have these different tracks and they're all associated to based on the different objects I have and, and when they're visible, basically. And so now it, it's a little easier to organize things because I can make multiple phases and you can really build it more like a true Gantt chart. And it's not just kind of one long timeline. So it's real nice because I can put certain elements visible within phase three that I don't have in phase one. And there can be a proper overlap on when that is. And you can really set up a project timeline. Now, I have yet to use phasing in a professional or personal sense within twin motion just because. I use Twin Motion for more of a visual, I mean, it is just a visual aid. It's for great visuals and exporting renders and animations. I have not yet seen a good reason to set this up in phasing, but if you do want to create a, an animation of your phases, it makes sense that you would want to do that with the phasing tool. And I'll save that for a separate video all in and of itself. Coming back here, we've got Enhanced Realism more realistic looking water. And you know, this, this image looked pretty great because you could see more proper reflections and it's accounting for all the trees and lily pads there. And it's gonna be hard for me to show you this exactly because I don't have like the perfect scene like they do, but we can start to see some things here. But I'm gonna change this material maybe to more of a, a grassy looking nature here. And we can start to put in some trees in hopes to get more of a look that we are after here, maybe a smaller tree. We can put some other trees here. We can make this really start to jump out. And, you know, the ocean and water always has looked good within Twin Motion. But, you know, 
I, I'm just going to have to take their word for the fact that it's improved. And it could be that we need to change some of our sun angles to start, le start to see some of these reflections at work. But, you know, what, what can I say? Like, it, it still looks good. We can, we can see a proper amount of the material underneath the water as it comes up and rises over the material. It's, it's not that whenever you see water, you only see water. You can see water underneath. And honestly, if I change this, this ocean to something else, a different type, Maybe we can start to see what this might look like. You know, if it, we get looking here, yeah, I can start to see some of the green, not only from the material beneath, but some of the reflections of the tree above it starts to look pretty good. Now, of course, I don't want a muddy water, but maybe a tropical river looks pretty similar there. Tropical sea. Yeah, y you get the idea. It's supposed to be better, but it's one of those things where it's kind of harder to tell out of the box. But I'm sure as we start to populate, more of our scenes that we're going to see a big difference in what these look like and how we can really get better looking effects with the ocean with these enhanced realistic looking oceans. So coming back to the website, more realistic rain and puddles. Okay. I, you know, we always like this. It's kind of an added effect that we have with twin motion. It's really nice and easy to do something like that. So I'm actually going to come over here. I'm going to hide my start, my uh, prisms there. And I'm going to turn my ocean off and we're going to come onto the ground here. Go ahead and move to the ground there. And I'm going to go to, I'm going to change my weather and make sure we've got some rain. And, you know, really immediately we could see there's a lot of puddles here and like they, they look pretty good. They look pretty realistic, but I will say that I've had a lot of success in not only just seeing the, nice looking puddles we have with 2020.2 but when you start to introduce different sun angles and particularly if you look at back at the website it's more of a sunset dusk dawn type of image and you'll notice as i change the sun here the the crazy difference that it makes whereas if in the middle of the day it's not a lot there but as i go farther into the day really you could see the effects of the puddles and the rain and how good that looks like this looks really good it's like proper puddles and really especially looking at the sun there that's that's an exciting shot that looks pretty good and I, all i'm looking at is one material for the starting ground and a background that's all of this being default within twin motion but just the fact that the sun being where it is it looks really amazing and that looks good you can clearly see that there's a lot better quality in the puddles and i i Really excited about that, and it's really good looking. So I'll bring my sun back up, and I'll probably go ahead and change the weather back slightly. We'll have some puddles in there still. That's fine. Let's now put ourselves in the air again, and let's go back and look at the next update. Enhanced car material. Okay. I mean, I'm excited about cars and helicopters and the materials and all that, so let's start to look at those. Let's place those down. We'll go to vehicles and let's go to cars and really it doesn't matter what car we put. Let's place this car here. And so, you know, this is looking pretty good. Like cars, the materials here and the cars have kind of always looked pretty good, but you know, I mean, they especially look good now, but as I click on the car, we have all these different colors and you know, sure. That looks pretty good. Let's play with some of the sun angles again and we can start to see what this looks like at a different time of day. You know, like, looks pretty good. We could see how this is really nice. And, you know, it's just a high quality car material. Looks good. I like it. N looking at the next, we've got some new and updated assets. We've got Eastern Asian trees. And some of these trees look pretty good. And let's go place a few of them. Go into vegetation, trees. And really, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see I think starting with like curry leaf I and mean, this weeping fig looks pretty cool. You know, like some of these are very unique looking trees and like flame of the forest. Like this is cool. This is a really cool tree, you know, and it looks a bit fantasy like, but you know, it is really cool. And I'm a fan of this kind of tree. It's really nice. And the age, it just, you could really see the, the difference there. And I, I like that tree a lot. So 15 different new trees of Eastern descent. That's cool. New construction vehicles. This is not a crazy big update, but you know, it's nice to see more of these. 
we can come up to the top vehicles and then we'll see construction machines and if you scroll all the way to the bottom past some of the cranes you can see all these tractors and loaders and excavators you know cool looking stuff you know they move and do all this kind of stuff you know move dirt around or whatever it is and you can put in a custom logo change the color whatever it is looks nice i like it always nice to see those kinds of assets and then customizable smart aircrafts. <laughs> this is not something I would have thought that I wanted or needed or really ever thought would exist. But again, we're going to go back to vehicles and then aircraft. And any of these aircraft can actually function as a, a custom vehicle. So let's just place this plane here in its park position. You know, look good. It's a cool looking plane. It's a nice jet. But when I click on it, I can change all of these colors and, you know, you can get as crazy as you want with all these colors. And, you know, I would hope that I would never cross some sort of plane that looks like this because I would, I, it would not be my first choice to ride on a plane like this. It certainly doesn't belong in 2020, but regardless, we've got lights we can turn on. Let's go ahead and put ourselves on the ground and I'm going to change this to more of a night shot so we can start to see some of these lights come into play and turn on so i've turned them off let's go ahead and turn them back on so like that's cool you know you can really see the lights on in the cabin and it's pretty cool pretty cool you know can't say that i'm gonna need to make a plane look like this every day but uh you know why not it looks good it's fun and then that is going to do it for all the new updates for twin motion 2020.2 I would encourage you to all get a license and it, it's st I actually still have it for 50% off. It's 250 bucks for up free updates until the end of next year. That's that is absurd. Like there's nothing, there's no software that is this cheap out there anywhere. <laughs> and I would highly encourage you to get it. You know, if you enjoyed this video and really, especially if you enjoy this program, definitely get a subscription. That is going to do it for this video. Twin Motion 2020.2. What do you think of all these new updates? Are they exciting? Is it not enough or whatever it is? I am truly excited about this update because of all the animations and the fact that we can put some custom animations. That's exciting. Look for the new doors video coming out soon. All the customization that we have with the animation of the doors and replacing doors that you have from Revit or some other program with these new animated doors is going to be important. So you're going to find that all within that video. If you happen to learn something, hopefully you did, demolish that like button. Helps me out a lot. Also, if you're new here, consider changing the face of that subscribe button to existing. We cover everything in Twin Motion, Inkscape, you know, Revit, whatever it might be, all the new updates and everything that you might want to do. If you have a question about anything in Twin Motion or anything else, leave those in the comment section. I will answer all of them. Hope you have a wonderful day. See you in the next one, and thanks for watching.